country in the south of Europe, stunningly beautiful from the tip of her toe to her alpine summits. Italy is packed full of natural wonders, secrets, and elemental forces. Always ready to surprise, and impossible to tame. Late winter in the Italian Alps, 800 kilometers of rough, rugged high mountains stretching from the French to the Slovenian border. Spectacular, but also freezing cold and threatening for those who want to survive here. Only specialists like the Alpine Ibex can master the extreme conditions. They have taken over the zone between the edges of the forest and the ice. The animals are frugal and astonishingly good climbers. The males also carry an imposing set of horns up to a meter long. All these qualities have turned them into a living symbol of the Alps. Alpine ibex were as good as extinct, surviving only here, in the Italian national park of Gran Paradiso. Today, however, they're also re-established in other alpine areas. With each passing day, the sun is in the sky for longer, but the snow stubbornly remains, even in low-lying areas. A bearded vulture. With a wingspan of almost three meters, he soars above the peaks. These majestic birds were eradicated around 1900, but in the last few decades, they've been reappearing in the Alps. Around 100 bearded vultures live here today. They're also dietary specialists. They get by on bones. That's why they avoid the victims of winter at first, giving others the right of way. The crow makes the most of the short time with the carcass. The peace doesn't normally last for long. The king of the skies, the golden eagle, has discovered the food source. With his hawk's eyes, his vision is around three times that of a human. Dead chamois ensure his survival, as well as that of crows and ravens. Now, in late winter, the golden eagle also feeds on carrion. The eagle can't carry prey which is heavier than himself, so everyone has to take their place at the carcass. Every day the eagle needs a good 200 grams of meat. The eagle dissects the prey with his beak, although his real hunting weapons are his extremely strong claws, capable of penetrating a chamois's skull. So the crow should take care. Italy's golden eagle population has been estimated at around 500 breeding pairs. In the Alpine region, most of the suitable habitats are occupied.
alpine chuffs are true mountain experts, living above the tree line. The aerial acrobats occupy the highest peaks, literally playing in the wind. It's been documented that they follow mountaineers up to 8,000 metres in Nepal. The outstanding gliders reach more than 200 kilometres an hour in descents. Beneath them lies the unique world of the Dolomites. The Dolomites form the heart of the Italian Alps. And every evening is different. Mountains and clouds constantly create new pictures in the sky. First light the next morning, curious sounds from the mountain forest. The caper Cayley, Europe's largest game bird, performs his courtship dance for the ladies. During breeding season, the testosterone level of the birds, who can grow up to a metre high, increases dramatically. The cocks, otherwise very shy and rarely seen, are now highly aggressive, attacking even humans. Despite his best efforts, on this morning, the cock remains without a hen. Yet his courtship song seems to act like a wake-up call for nature. Finally, the sun gathers its strength. The landscape is in flux. Few other regions in Europe change their appearance so radically throughout the year. For months, the vast precipitation has been bound up in ice and snow. Now the spring releases it. Crystal clear and shiveringly cold, the mountain streams of the Alps are home to the Dipper. She's a real water baby the only indigenous songbird who regularly swims and dives. Being plump, she can maintain body heat for longer in the ice-cold water. Her bones are pretty heavy, making it easier to dive. Underwater, she turns over stones in her search for insect larvae. In the early mornings and afternoons, the dipper goes in search of food. And at noon, a thorough grooming session. The dipper greases its feathers extensively, using secretion from the preen gland. Only then does the water run off perfectly. The high mountain range, practically inaccessible, is a habitat for the sure-footed, like chamois.
The solitude also attracts others, however. The chamois are cautious. They've long known about the presence of this enemy. The wolves have killed some prey. Every day they need to consume 10 to 20% of their body weight in meat, some four to eight kilos. In contrast to Germany, there's never been an attempt to eradicate wolves in Italy. In the early 1970s, however, there were still only around 100 of them left. In 1976, they were officially protected under law, and since then the population has multiplied. Nevertheless, wild wolves are shy. Only with a lot of luck will you ever catch sight of one in Italy. The sun, climbing higher with each passing day, ensures the supply of meltwater from the high mountains. Spring needs a little time up here. Still, it won't allow itself to be held back. Most alpine streams in Italy feed into the longest river in the country, the Po. At its mouth to the Mediterranean, it forms a huge delta, today an important nature reserve. The Po Delta into Regional Park is Italy's most prized bird sanctuary. In a few places, the delta at the Adriatic Sea is extremely rich in fish, but they don't let themselves be snatched from their backyard that easily. The hunt demands a balletic performance from the little egret. The birds hunt much more successfully in small groups than alone. The heron's beak serves as a harpoon. In fact, its entire body construction, including the neck, is designed for the purpose. The hunters are on the prowl for big game. The experienced bird grabs the red swamp crawfish so skillfully that he can't use his pincers. Some quick realignment and head shaking breaks the crab's weapons. Then the whole procedure again. Flush him out, give him a jab, then you get pinched. With a bit of luck, you might come across a female crab. They have considerably smaller pincers. Little egrets are common in the delta. For a hundred years, their numbers have been growing almost everywhere. In the past, they were intensively hunted. Their decorative plumage was highly coveted in the fashion industry and sometimes traded more expensively than gold. Living much more secretively is the purple heron. 
its breeding colonies are always hard to reach. Before feeding, the parents first check out the lie of the land around the nest. Safety is the highest priority. Only then do the young get to their food. The extensive floodland of the delta is tailor-made for the purple herons. 300 to 400 couples are said to be breeding here. In the rest of Europe, the birds are set to lose perhaps three-quarters of their habitat through climate change. A koi poo. Koi poos were first introduced from South America for their fur. By now they've occupied vast parts of Eurasia and their successful progress is likely to continue. Where generations of salt workers once toiled, today the supply ducts and facilities of the former industry lie derelict. Humans move out and animals move in. In 1985, the salt works were abandoned. Three years later, the park was opened. A hole in the old wall suffices for the kestrel to settle in. But they don't build nests. Originally, pigeons wanted to nest here, but they have no chance against the falcons. The male brings back a lizard, perhaps for the last time. Only one chick is left in the hole. His siblings have already moved out. Today, a gusty wind sweeps the delta. The young birds hesitate. Not ideal conditions for takeoff and landing. Staying on your feet is dangerous enough. A broken wing would mean certain death. The daily flight exercises are canceled. The Po Delta is one of the most treasured natural landscapes in Italy. Humankind and nature have formed the delta together. In this case, a true success story for biodiversity. The nature reserve has continued to attract new species ever since its foundation. The greater flamingo, the largest of its kind, arrived all by itself. They obviously feel at home here, and they're staying. In the year 2000, greater flamingos bred for the first time in the lagoons of Comacho. These days, the colony can reach up to 10,000 birds in good years. Thus, the Po Delta has become one of the most important breeding grounds in the whole of Europe within only a few years. In pre-Roman times, Greater flamingos were probably widespread in the Mediterranean region, but wealthy Romans prized flamingo tongues as a delicacy, causing a massacre. The constantly increasing population in the Po Delta is encouraging. Atonement through nature conservation, 
2,000 years later. Flamingos are nutrition experts. Treading water stirs up microorganisms. The edge of the beak and the tongue together form a system to filter the plankton from the water. Laborious, but unrivaled. Only sometimes is there time for disagreement. Relative to body size, their necks and legs are longer than those of any other bird. And it's exactly those long legs which turn mating into a balancing act for the males. While the female gives up even watching, Flamingos are among the most sociable birds on Earth. When preparing for takeoff, however, everyone needs their own space. With around one and a half meters of wingspan, they can reach up to 60 kilometers an hour. So stages of five to 600 kilometers per day are no problem for them. Meanwhile, summer has arrived in the Italian Alps. Pastures and meadows become one big flower garden. Globe flowers are blooming, and the colorful fire lilies are attracting visitors. Lush hillsides in pale lilac, a sea of snakeweed. Life can really be enjoyed here. Paul, a farmer who grew up in the mountains, still feels connected to tradition and nature. His footsteps do not go unnoticed. The asp viper has poor visibility in the flowery meadow, but she still notices the slightest human or animal movement. The viper prefers to exercise caution around cows and people. Every couple of days, the farmer checks that everything is all right on the pasture. The cows are part of his life. They mean everything to him. As always, he's brought a few treats with him in his rucksack. The cows are already waiting for them. Cattle who still live in the open air this is agriculture with respect for nature. Whatever the mountain farmer gives his animals, they give him right back. This coexistence can still be found in some parts of the Dolomites today. The warning signal of a marmot. It announces someone's approach. They recognize the farmer, however, and seem to know that he poses no danger. Life up here is comfortable now. Lush greenery and not as many insects as at lower altitudes. Sitting around in the sun makes you thirsty. The red deer calf wants his mother. Ever since birth, doe and calf have been connected by an invisible scent bond. The mother recognizes her offspring by the smell of a secretion from its preorbital gland. Whenever the calf wants a drink, it opens the gland. Then mum knows, the little one's thirsty. The fuller the calf becomes, the more the gland closes again. 
That's enough now. The farmer is already preparing for the long winter. He learned his skills with the scythe from his father. It doesn't matter how steep the mountain meadow is. Hay from the alpine herbs ensures his animals survival over winter. Old trees are the starting point for his reconnaissance flights. The Rosalia longicorn is one of the most colourful beetles. The males occupy and defend a small patch of dying wood, preferably beech tree. As soon as the larger females allow, mating starts, lasting around an hour. Afterwards, he stays in the area as a precaution to stave off potential rivals. The female feels for cracks in the wood with a pointed tip on her hindquarters. She wants to lay her eggs. If she could finally be left in peace, that is. Summer doesn't last long here in the Italian Alps. Soon the evenings will be shorter again and the shadows longer. South of the Alps, one of the most famous regions on Earth. The rugged peaks give way to gentle hills and a mild Mediterranean climate. As soon as the morning mist lifts, she appears, Tuscany. mosaic of vineyards and small woods, olive groves and crop fields, endearing and full of treasures, great and small. History at every turn, ancient villages evolved over centuries. pair of jackdaws enjoying some quality time. Their marriage lasts a lifetime. The village tiger has the situation and his fleas under control. But below the village, in a small oak grove, troubles brewing. The stag beetle the largest of its kind in Europe has raised his weapons, his enlarged antler-like upper jaw. A rival has also scaled the tree. Conflict looms. Using their forceps, both beetles try to lever up their opponent and fling him from the branch. 
unless the intruder decides to beat a retreat. She lured the males using pheromones and has watched the fighting. She will only mate with the winner. The male skillfully shields his new partner, not allowing her any escape from his love cage. Yet again, his forceps come in handy. Enough romance. Now she will concern herself with the laying of the eggs. The resulting stag beetle larvae were considered a delicacy in ancient Rome. The many insects who live here attract a bird which is becoming more and more rare. The hoopoe is unmistakable thanks to its mottled crown. He feeds virtually exclusively on large insects and their larvae, so he loves the old sun-drenched groves which are full of food. Under the trees, a singular orchid paradise. Everything of distinction is represented here. The lizard orchid, ophrys, and marsh orchids. The air is filled with the scent of thyme. Wild and meadow herbs are her favourite delicacies. The Herman's tortoise. She knows exactly what she wants, favouring very specific plants and blossoms. Today it's the yellow ones. To that end, she covers 80 metres a day, sometimes even 400. Still, that's how the tortoise clocks up 12 kilometres in a whole year. In the middle of the countryside, a sea of poppies, typical Tuscany. Wherever it's too steep for agriculture, in demolished areas and on steep edges, that's where they live. Bee eaters. They're among the most colorful birds in Europe. Of course, such a flashy plumage needs careful attention. The bee-eaters arrived late from their African winter quarters. Only now, in June, have they started to dig their burrows. They're busy for two to three weeks, digging up to two metres deep and shifting five to six kilos of earth. In the process, they wear down their beaks by about two millimetres. The constant tunnelling not only creates dust, but also leads to parasites settling in the feathers. So grooming becomes very important. Bee eaters are skillful aerial hunters, able to spot a larger insect from up to 60 meters away. A short flight leads to success. That's required 400 times a day during brooding. The male gives the prey to the female as a bridal gift. This shows a willingness to mate up to 10 times a day in order to maximise the chances of success.
from the heart of Tuscany to her most southern coastal stretch, Marema. This is home to around 9,000 of an ancient breed of longhorned cattle, the Maremana, who live alongside the wild animals. They're constantly accompanied by a flock of cattle egrets. The birds exploit the rich insect life around the cattle, thereby making their work easier. The cattle have a light-bordered muzzle, a typical feature of the extinct ore ox. The bulls can grow up to 1.7 metres at shoulder height. I wonder who lives more dangerously here, the cattle or the egrets? Marema was a malaria-infested swampland up until last century. Her old coat of arms features four letters, standing for hardship, malaria, sweat and blood. No other breed of cattle could better manage the harsh living conditions. Since the animals feed on aromatic herbs and grass all year round, their meat tastes especially good. The cowboys of Marema, the so-called buteri, ensure the well-being of their horses and cattle. Their working animal is the maremano, a horse known for its sure-footedness and agility in difficult terrain. The horses are also patient, motivated and tough. The Buteri are masters in the saddle, real men. And they need to be here in the wild west of Tuscany. In the year 1890, according to legend, Buffalo Bill was here in Italy with his men. They held a competition with the Buteri to see who the best cowboys were. The American cowboys maintained they had won, and the Buteri said the exact opposite. Back to the Southern Alps. The Alpine lake is crystal clear and smooth as ice on this autumn morning. Only the nutcracker is agitated, meaning there's something in the bushes. Brown bears live very secretively and reclusively, for good reason. For centuries, the great predator was feared by humans. Brown bears were mercilessly slaughtered in many places, including Italy. Around 100 animals still live throughout the country in three separate populations. One group lives in the Adamello Brenta Nature Park in Trentino. Before 1999, their number had shrunk to three animals. As a result, 10 further bears were introduced from Slovenia. With great success, the strictly protected group has, by today, reached over 40 animals again. The bears have already laid down fat reserves for their winter dormancy. Here they show just how extremely mobile even a colossus of a bear can be. Autumn in the Alps arrives quickly. Even the trees take precautions. Larches lose their needles. 
but they break down the green leaf pigment of summer beforehand, storing the valuable substances in their trunk and roots. The needles turn yellow. Insect hunting of the highest caliber. The white wagtail knows where it's worth a look. The deer herd has found a rutting arena. Only the strongest stag, the dominant male, stays near the female. The weaker ones keep their distance. The does and calves, who have moved away from the herd, tirelessly keep the boss at bay. By the start of the rutting, the stag has reached his maximum weight. He loses around a quarter of it through leadership stress. Again and again, he boldly stakes his claim. Digging around in the earth and extensive wallowing are typical behaviour traits of the dominant male. His hormone levels are extremely raised. During rutting, his urine smells so strongly of male pheromones that even humans can detect it. For competitors, it should be sufficient warning. He demonstrates his superiority with an imposing stance, swaggering gait, and his head held high. He constantly strides up and down his herd, checking eligible females for their readiness to conceive. Higher up, the snow is appearing again. On clear nights, it's already getting bitterly cold. A crossbill in search of minerals. Only now, in early winter, does rutting season begin for the chamois. In dramatic hunts and chases, the dominant male keeps his rivals from the herd away from the doe. Job done, now back to the lady. Chamois are cloven hoofed and extremely skilled at climbing. They wedge their hooves into the ground and their back legs, longer than the front ones, allow them to stand better on slopes. Even better climbers are the ibex. Whoever lives in the high mountains must have a head for heights and be sure-footed from childhood on.
the ibex have turned climbing into a fine art. There are over 40,000 of them in the Alps today. They all have ancestry in Italy. At the start of the 19th century, only 100 ibex were living in Gran Paradiso. All the animals alive today descend from those same 100. The young bucks are practicing their horn thrusts and really letting rip. They build up experience in the group. The prominent men are in the mood to mate. They constantly pick up the scent of the doors on their tongues. They approach cautiously. No, she doesn't seem to be quite ready yet. Gradually, peace reigns once more among the animals. Only those starting winter thickly coated and well nourished have a chance of seeing next spring in the Alps. From now on, energy conservation is top priority. If it's getting too dangerous up high, one can always head down to the valleys. And serious disputes should be avoided. The ibex seek protection in the herd, relying on experienced leaders. The high mountains allow their inhabitants no mistakes. For half a year, snow and ice will occupy the far north of the country. Then once again, life will flow back into even the mountains. This is Italy, stunningly beautiful and wild, from the Dolomites to Tuscany.